Okay guys, here's the rest of the leg, and then we'll look at the same muscles on another model as well. So we're going to do the lower leg, and the lower leg I like to divide up into four groups, basically. One of those is the anterior muscles. You have lateral muscles, which are going to be on the fibula. Notice the pinky here. And then you have two sets of posterior muscles. You have superficial and you have deep behind the gastrocnemius and the soleus. We're going to start on the anterior aspect of the lower leg. Notice here are the toes. The nails are on this side, the dorsal part of the foot. And just like we had in the arm where we had our extensors on the side with our nails, we have our extensors on the side with the nails in the foot as well. So these three muscles are all extensors. One of them will extend the big toe or the hallux. One of them will extend the digits. And one of them will extend um, the ankle. And really when we say extension, we mean taking the toes and bringing them closer to the front of the leg. Really this is called dorsiflexion, but we refer to the muscles as extensors. So here's our tibia, the bone itself, medial malleolus here. Right on top of the tibia, anterior to that bone, is the tibialis anterior. And you can follow that tendon all the way down and see it insert right there. Right next to the tibialis anterior, we have the little tiny muscle here that's just kind of peeking out from underneath the tibialis anterior. And this one, if we follow the tendon down, goes to the big toe. So this is the extensor hallucis longus. Anytime you name an extensor or a flexor in the lower part of the leg, you always tack on longus. So you can just remember longus starts with an L and leg starts with an L. So tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, going to the big toe. Then right next to the extensor hallucis longus, we have the extensor for the digits, extensor digitorum longus, extensor digitorum longus. And you can see this extensor hallucis longus is right in between extensor digitorum longus and tibialis anterior. Looking at the lateral aspect of the lower leg, notice the pinky toe. This is your lateral malleolus of the fibula. Both of these muscles have fibularis in the name because they're on the fibula. <coughs> so you have fibularis longus is this muscle here that makes up most of this muscle body. And then fibularis brevis is this part right here. If we follow those all the way down to the ankle, you can actually see two separate tendons here. Fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. And we'll see these on a different model and you'll be able to tell that they looked a little bit, look a little bit more distinct. Now we have our last two groups and those are both on the posterior aspect of the leg. One of them is the superficial group, which is the triceps surrey. Remember triceps means three. So there's three things in this group. One of those is this muscle here, which is the gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius, what most people refer to as their calf muscle. Notice these muscles both insert here on that Achilles tendon. Now the gastrocnemius has two heads, lateral and medial head. Okay, medial is on the side with the hallux, the big toe. So this is medial head of the gastrocnemius. And then on the other side, you have the lateral head. I can get this back in here, here. Well, that's the medial head of the gastrocnemius there. We need to take it off anyway. And here's our lateral head of the gastrocnemius. Now, located right underneath and kind of in between the two heads of the gastrocnemius, you'll see this little tendon here. It's white on this model. And if you follow it up, it connects to a little muscle body right here. This is your plantaris muscle. Not really part of the tri of the triceps surrey. It's kind of an accessory muscle. Not everybody has this, so it's just, it's sort of like the palmaris longus in the forearm. 
The other part of the tricep surrey, we had gastrocnemius lateral head, gastrocnemius medial head, and then right underneath of the gastrocnemius muscle, you have this large muscle, which is called the soleus. Now, if we take this gastrocnemius off and we turn it upside down, we can see the large soleus here. It looks kind of like a fish or the sole of a shoe. So fillet of sole, right, fillet of fish, uh, like a flounder. A sole is actually a fish that's kind of shaped like this. So this is a soleus. Notice on the front aspect, here's your Achilles tendon, here's your gastrocnemius. You can see the soleus all down the side of that um, Achilles tendon. All of this is soleus here. Okay, so it's going to be under all of that gastroc, all of the Achilles tendon, and underneath the plantaris, which is here. So those are our superficial posterior muscles. Now we have the deep posterior muscles. We have three muscles that mimic the ones we saw on the anterior. So these are all working in opposition of these anterior muscles. And then we have one extra muscle for the knee. So on the front, we had tibialis anterior, we had the extensor for the big toe, and we had the extensor for the digits. On the back, we have tibialis posterior. We have a flexor for the big toe. So this would be flexor hallucis longus. And we have a flexor for the digits. So this is flexor digitorum longus. Now remember I told you you have to add longus to both of the flexors and both of the extensors in the leg. L for longus, L for leg. Flexor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, tibialis posterior in between. Now if we look down here at the malleolus, let's see if you guys can see this, you can actually see these three muscles. Not so as well on this model as some. Uh, this one tendon is even kind of white, but we have one, two, three, and at the ten at the malleolus, these tendons actually cross. Two of them crisscross, so they're actually in a different order. Because up here with the muscle bellies, you have extensor digitorum longus, tibialis posterior, sensor hallucis. I mean, I'm sorry, flexor digitorum longus tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus. But down here at the malleolus, they're in a different order. If you followed the tendons, you'd actually have tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus. So these two actually crisscross. And there's a mnemonic for those, Tom, Dick, and Harry. T for tibialis posterior, D for flexor digitorum longus, and H, Harry, for flexor hallucis longus. So Tom, Dick, Harry. You can also do Tom, Dick, and very nervous Harry, and that's A, V, N, and very nervous for artery, vein, and nerve. But the tendons themselves are just Tom, Dick, and Harry. Now we're going to look uh, at one last muscle. And this is a deep muscle right behind the knee. It pops the knee from a locked position, and it's called popliteus. And this kind of comes across the knee obliquely. Popliteus. Now we're just going to look at these muscles on a few different models. All righty, looking at the thigh, we're going to do the quadriceps muscles first on the anterior aspect, rectus femoris. On either side are your vastus muscles, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis. Pick up the rectus femoris, and we have vastus intermedius underneath. Looking at the lateral aspect, you have your gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, tensor fascia lata, IT band here. Posterior aspect, you have your hamstrings. So on this um, lateral side, you have your biceps femoris with two heads. So biceps femoris long head, biceps femoris short head over here. 
On the medial aspect, you have your hot dog in a bun, semi tendinosis on top, and then semi membranosis, which you can see on either side of that semi tendinosis, because remember, it's underneath of this muscle, but you can see it poking out on either side. Looking at the medial aspect of the thigh, you have your two strap muscles, longest muscle in the body, sartorius from anterior superior iliac spine all the way down to the tibia, and your gracilis, thin like belts, strap muscles. And between your two strap muscles that make a V, you have your adductor longus. Remember, adductors are medial because they add the leg to the body. They pull it into the midline. Adductor longus. And then you have your large adductor magnus underneath gracilis. So all of this is adductor magnus. If I could pull gracilis off, you'd just see a huge, big muscle. And that's all adductor magnus. So it could be tagged anywhere here, anywhere here. All adductor magnus. Now looking at the lower leg on that model, <coughs> we'll start anteriorly, tibialis anterior. Here's your extensor digitorum longus, and right in between those, you can see the tendon for your extensor halicis longus, which we can follow down all the way to the big toe. Looking laterally, here's your fibula. You have your fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. And notice on this model, it's much more distinct. You have a nice line of separation um, and two very distinct tendons. So this is longus tendon here in the back, and this is your brevis tendon more towards the front. So fibularis longus. Fibularis brevis. Don't forget to follow these tendons when you guys are studying these. It's very important, especially with the um, forearm and the lower leg. Looking posterior on the lower leg, we have our superficial layer. So here's our gastrocnemius, lateral head, medial head. I know that because here's my little toe. That's lateral. I pick this up. Well, you can see soleus here and here, peeking out on either side of the gastrocnemius. And also, all of this is soleus. On this model, if we look at the knee, we can see our plantaris muscle here, popliteus behind the knee. And up here, you can actually see the cut heads of your gastrocnemius lateral head and gastrocnemius long head. These muscles coming around from the thigh are sartorius, gracilis, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and over here, biceps femoris long head and short head. Looking at our deep posterior muscles, you have your flexor hallucis longus, your flexor digitorum longus, and in between those two, your tibialis posterior, which is all of this here. This is popliteus. This is tibialis posterior.